you are looking at uh, some of the last correspondence between me and the person who I called the Lady Lack and Logic in a separate uh, upload. And, you know, I, I'm remembering when I first ever approached someone, this was back when I was in seventh grade, uh, there was a student that I had known for about four or five years. We went to just, we went to school with each other for a, a long time prior to me expressing any kind of romantic stuff. Uh, and I was, you know, unsuccessful, but this was notable for being the only time I've ever been absolutely confident that the person would say yes. Um, you know, all subsequent approaches after that have been with people that I've known for much smaller amounts of time. Um, that I don't think I know as well. And I remember just really believing there was no way she would say no. But she did. And I, uh, after a while, just went out and spoke to other ones and got the same result. And it's, it's somewhere between the period of 7th to maybe 10th or 11th grade. Because, you know, this might surprise some of you, but I was considered ahead of, before this chick stuff really started getting ridiculous, where I was talking to all the ones online and getting the same thing over and over, I was considered a normal person. I was considered someone that you know, went to school, spoke to people, you know, nothing that was really outrageous or insane. I didn't have anyone trying to say that I was some future terrorist, no, you know, nonsense like that. Um, there was never really any display of people trying to cast some kind of like bad faith premonition on me or just position toward me. Um, and that's why I've said before that this chick stuff really like, it finds ways to just, if, if you allow it, completely destroy your perception of yourself and, you know, just your, your overall happiness about things. I've told people before that I can still, even in admitting that I'm someone who doesn't believe they have any kind of mental deficiencies brought on by this, I can definitely say that this stuff has, has bothered me in a way that I don't really think anything else has. I've, I've never sat back and said about anything else, whether it was drawing, whether it was trying to get a position for some work or whatever, I've never said prior to this chick stuff that nothing I do makes a difference. It's always gonna be the same thing. You know, that was not something that I was uh, ever conditioned to believe in. Cause I used to think that, you know, this, this belief system of if you just keep trying and talk to enough of them, something will eventually happen. But we'll get more into that later. So in this message, you can see me responding to um, the nonsense that is being written by the chick. I'm not going to show you the whole thing because you don't, you don't need to see that. The, the central point here is that this is someone I spoke to. And again, this is important. So I want you to really listen to this. Extend your ears. Let them open up and you know keep retain a memory of what I'm saying here. This is a person I spoke to between at least September of last year uh, and July of this year. So that's almost, what, 10, 9 months, some, somewhere around that time span. But uh, the point is, most people would consider that a very lengthy amount of time to talk to a person. I think so anyway, you know. So imagine my surprise when I see, and I'm the one who said female idiot, so she's quoting me. She says, but in your case, I truly think you'd prematurely push away any female idiot that did reciprocate your interest at this point. So the same person who's enjoyed the luxury of me giving them almost an entirety of a, of a year of my lifespan is going is is stupid enough to write that they believe I would prematurely push away any broad that reciprocated my interest now you actually can see in my second response you know what what does prematurely mean and she never defines it she never says what she means by that it's just another random thing that she states to try and convey her ridiculous point about, you know, the passage of time and the overall compass of how long you expect someone to live. Because I said before, when you look at all these mass shootings, when you look at the fact that people have died in their 20s, their 30s, their 40s, you can't keep saying to someone that you have all your life to experience this, you can find someone any age, all this stuff that, you know, we don't have, I guess I'll put it like this. Do not allow anyone to tell you that you can automatically get a partner because, you know, if you just live long enough, 
um, and you'll automatically live to whatever age. They're, they're not guaranteed. And you can see that in the different events. Hell, we just had a shooting in Texas a few, uh, like an, what, an hour ago, where five people were killed. And we're going to find out how old they are, but the uh, person who did it is in their 30s. So, you know, you never know how long you live or, or die. But that's why I ask people, what do you mean by the this this comment whenever they bring up time and you have nothing but time and various statements like that and they they can never define it so you know she's not the only person to do that but again the the central issue here is someone who i spoke to for almost 10 months is stupid enough because remember i i cut it off i was the person who said i'm done speaking to you you have nothing to offer go away um someone who was spoken to for almost a full year is is so their, their brain is dripping to the point where they actually think as, as they say right here that i would prematurely push someone away so the second part of their message is them talking about how the people that they speak to or whatever um you see the other part of my message. I'm not going to wait two years for someone to decide I'm worthy of taking them out on a date if I wasn't good enough when we first met. When I first met that person, I'm good enough a thousand days later. And the, the point of that statement is just to say, again, I don't let these people trick me. I know that when ch that chicks are like guys in the sense that when they first see someone of the opposite sex that they find attractive and know they would want to sleep with, they try to get to know them to make themselves more comfortable with this arrangement i've done the same thing like and that's what is so crazy they act like i'm not human that i don't have the same kind of impulses of oh, I, oh smash or pass that that kind of thing it's this basic uh, thing that people do that they try to act as like not a parent like oh you, if you just have a personality and you know you own all these things and these resources and you know you take care of her. no man it it get out of here with that disneyland stuff um now this whole the whole point of the video is centered around this next message now in response to all of what i've written here where i ask her where i say to her i'm not going to wait two years for someone to decide i'm worthy where i say i'm not going to you know what what do you mean by prematurely in her response she neither answers she neither responds to me saying wait two years someone to the side I'm worthy nor my question of what do you mean by prematurely instead she writes nobody recognizes when they're edging toward extremism sigh and then ask if I want to talk to someone about this now in my response to her and this is this is why I said that there's like a disconnect between me and my contemporaries where when people ask me things uh, especially if it's if it's not something stupid like you know how many times do you um, touch your backside or you know, some other weird stuff that you would only see online. When people ask me things directly, usually I can give an answer, um, especially if it's by text because you have it on record. It's not like you know someone's talking at a thousand words per minute and they just don't uh, answer something or you forget what they said because there's so much information or questions being put out at once. So she asked that question i say no and the response is to take this is her response i'm not i'm not going to show it because i don't want to put this person's picture on here she sends me a, a website profile of some therapist guy and then his email and his phone number and and tells me because i said i don't want to talk to these internet people trying to psychoanalyze who i am after not even having met me uh basically saying you know oh this is a professional person with a legit resume and you know, blah, 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 blah. So this gets on my nerves because you you literally just heard me say or just read what I wrote, which was that I don't want to interact with a person about this. I've talked to enough people about this topic. Um, and I've actually realized that one of the mistakes I've made, again, is talking to people who've never experienced this because they can't put themselves in your shoes. Um, you know, that's another thing that people always try to get me to feel sympathetic for others. But when I ask for the same sympathy, they, they try to act like it's some kind of benign request or some insane idea. Like, how could you ever want someone to feel whatever? But the, the biggest part of this, right? And the, the, again, the title of this is that comment right there. Nobody recognizes when they're edging toward extremism. 
Psi. Now, you just read what I wrote to her, which is me talking about, I, I leave people alone, um, asking what prematurely means, because I spoke to this person for almost a year, uh, and saying, you know, extremism of not wasting my time talking to people that don't care about me. What the hell is so extreme about leaving other people alone? What What is so off-putting and, and self-destructive as to just say, you know what? This interaction with this person is going nowhere. They're pissing me off. Th this isn't doing anything for me in any type of way. I don't need it. And just packing your bag, metaphorically, of course, and walking away. In, in my last call with her, uh, before we stopped speaking, again, on, on my part, I asked her point blank, what can you give me? Because I always say that unless someone is feeding you or you actually enjoy their presence, all of these other people you don't need. They, they don't offer anything. You know, I, I often tell my subscribers, I thank you for checking my stuff out. I thank you for leaving comments. Um, you know, you give some kind of response that I think is usually decent. But there's there's some that that's all tied to happiness because the truth is I can put stuff out and it can get no views and it would still be the same effect. I would still have this thing up and you know it it just it would it would still be allowed to come out. Now obviously when people leave positive stuff back, it usually fills your dopamine. You you uh, feel better about what, whatever you put out because you have a a nice reception. Um, this is why I was saying that when you look at the thing of these chicks, they're having these children they can't afford. It is, they're able to do this not only because they have the sexual parts, but because they know the people around them are going to get pissed off for like maybe a day or two and then go, but, you know, the child is, you know, they're going to suffer and then take them back. And, you know, they, they get away with doing this. Basically, there's there's no long term ramification. There's no one saying, you know what? I raised you better than this. This is absolutely pathetic, ridiculous. I am done speaking to you. I don't care what happens to you. Get out of here. It's hard for people to do that. I recognize that. But, you know, the flip side of that coin is because people don't want to take that step of saying, I have standards. I will not abide by this buffoonery. We, we have people who feel the inclination to, you know, have unprotected, you know what, you know, and feel no remorse for it because whatever happens afterward, no one's going to shame them for. No one's going to say, "Hey, you shouldn't be doing this. This is wrong. There, you know, you're you're stupid for doing, which is what you are if you do this." But I said before that you know my my ideology of just the, the extremism of leaving people alone, right? I when I did the th the video about the two, two chicks that had these unplanned parenthoods, right? I have not said anything to either one of them since either since any of that has happened and that's that's because i don't condone their lifestyle i think what they did is is ridiculous and i hate the fact that when i tell when i say these people have no brains when i say that you could literally cut off an eighth of my brain it would be t three times the size of whatever that little thing is wobbling back and forth in their heads people get more upset with me for saying something like that versus the actions and activities of these characters who are who are literally destroying the lives of people who haven't even been born yet. And, you know, I said before that a lot of, you know, we talk about people being selfish, and I've mentioned I'm selfish. I said, yeah, I'm selfish in the fact that I actually want to enjoy life. I actually want to be happy with what I do. And I can't be happy being surrounded by not only people that condone that lifestyle by still speaking to those people, but that do it and don't see anything wrong with it. And I said before that the, the saddest thing about the chick stuff, right, is that I evolved. I did change. I, I went from someone who wanted, who just wanted to get a date, have some steady relationship, um, you know, do all the little physical stuff to just kind of accepting that that wasn't going to happen, but that at the very least I could, you know, have a child that was that became the long-term goal of any of these online interactions every single online interaction i've had for the last three years that has been romantic in terms of me wanting to eventually do some romantic stuff with that person has been toward that goal i've i have and at no point whether it was when i still wanted to actually 
just get a date or have some kind of uh, long-term person. It's never been about how many chicks I could get with or having some supermodel or any any of that nonsense because it's all superficial stuff that that only makes you happy in that immediate moment. And I, I look sometimes at the uh, still remaining emails and messages I have with some of these chicks and the various images they sent me. And these aren't people who are, you know, drop dead gorgeous or uh, the hottest creatures in the world. And I think anyone else and anyone else who has seen their pictures that I, I am around knows that. So imagine my surprise when I come on here and I say, you know, these chicks are not receptive. I've spoken to so many of them. I'm sick of them because they keep doing the same thing. People keep saying they're not the same, but then they do the same thing. So what's the, the difference between them anyway? They'll come over here and they'll tell you, oh, he's talking to people who are out of his league. And I said, you know, only in this rinky dink backwards brain society can some broad who slaps on some short gown uh, and lives in some house where they're taking section eight and the only reason they even have anywhere to stay is because they popped out some child before they were even out of high school is considered above my league you know for just on the basis of how they look something that none of unless unless you factor in weight that none of us can control i mean i'm not six two because i'm smarter than anybody else that was something that was preconditioned by who my parents were so you know why should someone say i matter more than other people just because of the way I look that that I that other people can be millionaires they can be well renowned musicians doctors politicians any profession you can think of any no, any net worth you can picture and yet somehow because of the way I look I'm considered above their league and I'm going to do I'm going to do another video about this where it's going to be a picture of a guy in a Ferrari with a, a um you know really 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 tall muscular chest you know you probably will get some kind of like doctorate in the background no he went to some ivy league school and he's going to pull up in the neighborhood of some woman with stretch marks in her pajamas that's 300 pounds and I, that the whole point of this is going to be you you can't keep basing someone's worth off of their appearance it leads to crap like this because honestly neither of those chicks that had the, that had these children are are really that attractive the only reason they're any better than me is because they have vaginas. And I don't know why we can't just admit there is a serious, ridiculous uh, one, 20 to 1 gender gap uh, in terms of the level of success between, you know, these, uh, my contemporaries. You know, I don't know why they can't just admit that that's a thing. This chick, this lady lacking logic, she pissed me off to no end. For two reasons when we talked about the romance stuff one because she tried to keep telling me that because of my age i apparently didn't have a legitimate argument so you know i can get turned down for eight years between the time of when i'm 12 and, and 20 but because i'm 20 i can't mention you know getting turned down 90 times that that's the kind of logic that she would employ the, you know and you know this is stupid because if someone gets raped at 16 or 17 or 18 or whatever age, no one tells them, well, you know, you're only 17, so maybe the rape doesn't happen. They, they give them sympathy. They listen to what they have to say. They treat it like it's a serious thing, which is what you should do. When people state something that's based off experience, they should, and it it doesn't implicate a famous person or have some ulterior motive of trying to bring down another person that you know. You should give it the benefit of the doubt. Why the hell would they lie about that? And I got so much controversy when I said, I hope no more chicks send me messages. People said, oh my God, what? why would you say? I said, look, I don't talk to any of these chicks for my health. I talk to them because there's always that basic premise that one of them will come along and start a long-term relationship that produces a kid. If they can't do that and all they want to do is type stuff and they don't want to have a phone call or ever encounter each other in person, I don't need to speak to them. I don't... There, there's nothing they can offer me because the one thing I want from them is very simple and it's laid out and it's methodically planned out. That's why if I ever have one, which I'm getting to a point where I don't think it'll ever happen, but if I ever had one, it would be 50 steps ahead of anything that these bastards are producing. And, you know, when I say that people act as if I have some superiority complex, I'm simply saying that I'm not stupid enough to bring a life into the world that I don't pre-plan for. When did that become such a controversial thing? And why the hell is that like such a 
a, a strange position. Like, who, who would get mad about that? But I said, that's the only thing I want from these chicks. And that's why I don't speak to any of them anymore. If they message me, I talk to them for a little bit and then drop them off. Because I, I just, I don't have the patience for this any, at this point. I'm not a little kid. I don't, I don't have an infinite lifespan that can contrary to popular belief. I'm not going to live uh, guaranteed 60, 70 more years. And even if I did, I sure as hell wouldn't spend them trying to talk to some broads that haven't changed from the time from from the time I first started approaching them in 2011. I told you the only time I've ever had one of these chicks re reciprocate and actually want to start dating was when it approached me. And they turned out to be the, one of the biggest gold diggers in U.S. history. So, look, I'm going to keep employing my, my position, which is if, if a chick can't offer me a kid, I have no business talking to them. And if they can't commit to wanting some romantic thing after two, three, four, five months, they can get the hell out of here. We don't, we don't need that. I have better things to do than 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 hope and pray. Ooh, uh, maybe she'll reciprocate if I just speak to her for a billion days. Forget that. And this idiot that you see the messages of, she's another one. She's talking about wanting a child, and she's pushing thirty in the the. Uh, if I remember correctly, after thirty five is when they start deteriorating. So that's another person who, just like all the other millennial idiots, my contemporaries that are not bright, and this isn't all of them. So don't don't try to pretend like I'm lumping everyone into a box. She believes she has an infinite amount of time to do all this stupid stuff. I don't, I don't, that's not my ideology, so I leave people alone. But again, my extremism is stepping away. A lot of people will tell you, you need to give, the, you need to say to these people, oh, I hope you, you're well. No, no, I don't hope any well thing of you at all. I, I, I just hope that I never have to hear your voice again. I hope I never read another message from you again. Just go away. You offer me nothing.